Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on mechanical power. How to measure the mechanical power of ventilator at the bedside. Ever since ARDS has been noted in clinical practice in 1967, it has been known to be an entity which produces severe dyspnea, tachypnea, hypoxemia, hypercapnia with deranged pH values with loss of long compliance with diffuse alveolar infiltrates in chest x -ray. And the therapeutic intervention of apparent value has been known to be a positive and expiratory pressure or the PEEP. Now, the use of positive pressure merely buys us time. It is by no way going to heal the lungs. So unless the underlying process which has made the lungs like this is successfully treated or reversed, the prognosis will remain grave. The only thing that a positive ventilation gives us is a decreased work of breathing, better PO2 values, better PCO2 values and a normal pH. But this does come at a price. Now what is the price that we pay to get these values and for giving the positive pressure. Now the price is lung injury. So already injured lung gets further injury because of this positive pressure which is being applied. This is especially because there is a lot of heterogeneity in the lung fields. So th since there is a lot of heterogeneity or inhomogeneity there is a increase stress raises and the size of the lung is also reduced because these areas are completely consolidated. So the lung size is now of a baby lung. So there are a lot of areas where there can be an increased stress and injury to the alveoli because of the high pressure that is being applied. Now it didn't take much long to know that there is something called lung injury. In 1967, we got ARDS and by 1973, we knew that high positive pressures will result in further lung injury. So, this is actually the price which we pay for these good PCO2, PO2 and pH values that is VILI, ventilator induced lung injury which encompasses almost barotrauma, volutrauma, atelectrauma, ergotrauma, everything. As long as we remain unable to discriminate how much is actual ARDS and how much is the billy which is being done by the ventilator while trying to get those good PO2 values, the only thing that we can do is to minimize the hazard associated with mechanical ventilation, which basically is to reduce the mechanical power. So to reduce the mechanical power, we, we need to know all these things. That is the pressure, which is also including the PEEP, the volume, the respiratory rate, as well as the flow. Now, this paper published in NEJM by Amato, the driving pressure was associated with increased mortality. That is, as the driving pressure is increased, the mortality rate increased. So, a driving pressure of less than 15 was said to be associated with reduced mortality. But as we already have seen, it is just one part of the story. We also need to know the rate, the PEEP, the flow, everything. So the mechanical power and the development of the billy through high respiratory rate can also cause damage even if you have reduced the driving pressure or the tidal volume. So the global impact of mechanical ventilation is also there which is that it affects also the cardiovascular system it also affects the renal system the neurological system so there are a lot of things that are being affected physiologically by the high positive pressure apart from that you have mus the use of muscle relaxants nutritions and infections now the facts are Mechanical ventilation is a supportive measure. It is not a treatment measure. It is a life-saving thing. It helps in saving the life of the patient and allowing the lung to heal. 
It's only when the lung and the primary disease process heals that patient is going to improve. But that is a price. The price is Willy. Willy depends on ventilatory as well as the lung factors. And we need a compromise between the mechanical ventilation and the patient. Only then we can have a good outcome. So the action is to treat the primary disease of the process and to monitor the mechanical ventilation over time so that we minimize this willy. Now the mechanical power is dependent on the plateau pressure, the driving pressure, the peak pressure, the peep, the respiratory rate as well as the flow. Now how do I assess mechanical power in the bedside? All these things we read in our books and we find that almost impossible because there are two complicated formulas and it's we feel that it's almost impossible to calculate the power at the bedside. So let's break it slowly. The first is what is power? Power is just energy so it has to be represented in joules. So it is always present even when you're breathing spontaneously or you are having a positive pressure mechanical ventilation. Now this power or this energy has the power to destroy the mechanical bonds. It is this destruction of the mechanical bonds which will result in Willy. Now, how can I determine mechanical power? We have seen these formulas which are extremely complicated. And once you see these formulas, it is almost impossible to think that I can do something like this on the bedside. But let's look at part wise now basically the power is the delta change in the volume which is produced by a pressure that we are applying which will give us the energy which will be represented in the joule so this is basically the area under which the volume is going up and this is the energy that is being spent and this is the total power that is being used by us when we are breathing this can be in a ventilator as well so this is the total power this blue shaded area is the total power and we need to calculate this at the bedside so this primarily depends on as we have already discussed the tidal volume as well as the pressure now let's break it down into three parts there are three parts of this delta v the first is the resistive component. This is the work that is being done to push the air through the airways. This is before we get into the respiratory part of the airway. This is the bronchus and the tubes. Now this is called the resistive component. This is the work to move the gas. This is the P resist into the tidal volume. The next is the the work to distend the lung. This is the work or the energy that is being spent to expand the lung resulting in a dynamic component which is the elastic dynamic component. This is P tidal into the delta P. Finally, we have a static component as well. This is the work which is done to prevent the recoil of the lung that is which prevents the total collapse of the lung. This is because of PEEP. And this is the elastic component. So we have basically three components, a resistive component, a elastic dynamic and an elastic static. So when we add up all these three components, we will get what is called the mechanical power. So let's break that previous graph down. This what we see, the first part is the static component, which is the peep. And this and once we start developing this tidal volume, this is the dynamic component. So this part is the resistive component. So we have three components, the static component, the dynamic component and the resistive component. This is the peep. P tidal is, is P plat minus peep that is the driving pressure and this is how we get the peak pressure and the plateau pressure. So if we use this formula, this is tidal volume into the P resist plus tidal volume into the P tidal into 0.5 and tidal volume into P. 
which is multiplied by the respiratory rate because we have to monitor this over time mind you it's not just a single breath thing so it is the thing that is continuously happening which will give us the power that is multiplied by the respiratory rate into a factor so this 0.5 and 0.095 are factors which have been derived because of the equations so if we reduce it it comes down to p peak minus 0.5 into p plat minus p into tidal volume into respiratory rate into 0.098 so finally we have a formula which we think can be feasible enough to be used at the bedside now we see the two formulas this is the first formula which we have derived now and this is the formula which we had seen before now is it possible that both of these are same actually is this is a little complicated but more or less because of approximations and the mathematical passages this has been simplified so it basically gives us the same result practically though they look slightly different because of the mathematical passage they have been gone through now as we have seen this demonstrates that everything has been encompassed into this mechanical power formula now there are other formulas also as we can have seen over years these are from different formulas for our volume control and pressure control including the flow parameters and other parameters with correction factors however for volume control if you are giving volume control then it is p pick plus p with flow by 6 by 2 now instead of the tidal volume and uh, respiratory rate alone you directly put the value for tidal make minute ventilation and you can approximate this 0 0.098 into a 0 0.1 which it doesn't change much so now you don't need to do a inspiratory pause every time you need to calculate the value you can directly calculate it from the values which have been there in the monitor that is the p pick the peep and the flow you don't need the p plat now also so you don't need to do a maneuver every time you need to calculate the mechanical power and for this resistive power it has been approximated to 10 so it basically makes the job much easier now for pressure control it is the same correction formula into the minute ventilation into p plus p inspiratory this in this the authors assume that the delivery of pressure is perfectly squared so this is a decent uh, assumption doesn't change the value much now do these formula actually come anywhere close to the pain formula that we have seen yes the surrogate formulas approximate the reference method well enough to warrant their use in daily clinical practice and this has been proven in volume control as well as pressure control these are the graphs bland ottoman graphs which show there is a decent variation not much difference so we can use this surrogate formulas instead of those big impossible formulas so let's just see an example of using this formula this is a case scenario a male patient a predicted body weight of 80 with covid 19 on volume control with muscle relaxation and prone position here you can note down the values the tidal volume is 480 the driving pressure is 13 and minute ventilation is 11.9 and the peep of 8 out doing that we get a mechanical power of 33 joules per minute now what does that mean so basically the value if it is more than 17 to 22 it means that we are at the higher range this value has been proven in many studies which have been done recently which have shown that a value of more than 17 to 22 joules per minute will result in a higher risk of willy so once you have a higher risk of willy these are the various parameters which you will try to reduce so that you can reduce this and bring this back to the baseline so this is resist the respiratory rate the flow the tidal volume and the peep so try reducing these values so that you can bring this high power to the baseline but this may not be possible in all cases so this is something which you can do and try and see the best power 
combination which will result in the least billing. So again, a value that you get from calculating the mechanical power doesn't absolutely mean much, but it does help give you an idea that when you are giving a ventilation, which is at a high risk of producing harm. So you keep in your mind that you have to reduce certain values and maybe accept a deranged PO2 and PCO2 and so that you can reduce the damage that is being done by the ventilator. So the, as we can see over here, mechanical power is not the answer, but it is number to think about. So once you put these values, use these formulas, this is for the volume control, this is the pressure control, then you have a number in the back of your mind which you are trying to reduce in a patient. Now, the peak airway pressure gives us the mechanical power of the respiratory system and using the plateau pressure gives us the mechanical power which is being finally delivered to the lungs. So the take home message is mechanical power measurement is definitely feasible at the bedside. It is not that we need to do those complicated formulas only then just even as simple a formula as this can be used at bedside and always think about this value especially in difficult to ventilate patients so that you can reduce certain parameters which may reduce the mechanical power and reduce the risk of billing but do keep in mind mechanical power is always over time it is not just about just a single breath so always include the respiratory rate as well in your calculations thank you for your patience and i hope it was helpful check our website for the information